Hey friends, the more high quality Android smartphones come onto the market, the more I get the question of whether a current iPhone or an Android device is better. And from the incredible number of comments under my videos, I can see that many people are asking themselves whether they should switch from an iPhone to a Samsung Galaxy or Pixel smartphone, for example. Personally, I haven't used an iPhone as my daily driver for over a year now, and here are my personal reasons why. I have always used an iPhone since the iPhone 4S and have invested in the latest device every year. I use a MacBook as a laptop for my work and the YouTube channel here, but the Galaxy Z Fold 4 replaced my iPhone as my daily driver for the first time. Then the S23 Ultra came onto the market a year ago and since then I still have an iPhone, but only to test it for the channel and make comparisons. After using Android exclusively for a while now, I know noticed a few things when using the iPhone in between that really solidified my decision to stop using an iPhone for the foreseeable future. Number one, the camera. Many people may guess when they hear me say this, the fact is that the camera on the current iPhone doesn't do a good job for me as a content creator. I use my smartphone extremely frequently to take pictures of a new device. Especially when I'm out and about, I don't always want to lug my compact camera around with me. I just want to be able to film something. Unfortunately, with the current iPhone 15 Pro, the iPhone always automatically switches to macro mode when taking close-ups in video mode. Unfortunately, the image quality of this macro mode is far too poor for me to use it for my YouTube videos. Of course, you can switch off macro mode, but then you can no longer take close-ups because the iPhone's image then becomes super blurred even at not very close distance. Of course, the iPhone's camera is mega good for the average consumer, but for me personally, it's just not good enough. And what I really miss with the iPhone is the option to pause a video recording if I want to straighten something, for example. With the iPhone, Phone, you always have to stop the video and then start again. Number two, gesture control. If I'm on Android and want to go back, whether I'm in the settings, a YouTube website or wherever, I can do this easily with a swipe gesture to the left or right at the edges. This makes one-handed navigation through websites and menus super easy, no matter how big the device is. With the iPhone, this is only possible on the left edge of the screen. Even if I have a normal sized iPhone in my hand, I can only get there by stretching my thumb far across the screen and then I need my second hand to operate the device. It's super awkward and doesn't make any sense to me. Number three, notifications. And this is a complex topic. On the iPhone, you only have the option of switching notifications for an app completely on or off. On Android, on the other hand, you have the option of switching different notification categories in an app on or off. On Instagram, for example, you can decide whether you want to be notified of likes, comments or messages. As an Android user, what I personally miss most about the iPhone is the notification bar. When I receive a notification on Android, for example, an email or a birthday reminder, an icon for this notification notification is displayed at the top of the screen until I open or delete the notification. I use this small notification bar as a to-do list for things that I need to do later. For example, wish you a happy birthday or reply to a message. And above all, I can see it visually all the time, what I find super important for unfinished tasks. On the iPhone, the notifications are of course displayed on my lock screen, but when I open the iPhone, these notifications disappear from my field of vision and are only visible visible as a dot on the respective app. But I don't swipe through all my apps just to see if there's a dot somewhere. Or I have to swipe down from the top to get to this creepy notification center, which is just incredibly confusing. Personally, I've gotten so used to this notification bar on my Android device as part of my productivity system that I no longer get on well with the iPhone's notifications at all. Number four, app settings. On the iPhone, there is no way to change settings directly in the respective app. You always have to leave the app, go into the iPhone settings app, search for the app there and then change the setting. For example, with the camera. If I want to change something in the settings here, I have to leave the camera, go into settings app, search for the camera and then change the settings there. I mean, with Android, there are simply the settings directly in the app. Why is it so unnecessarily complicated with iOS? 
The same applies to other settings. For example, if I want to adjust the display brightness, I can still do that in the Apple Control Center, but everything else, such as setting the adaptive display brightness, I have to go back to the Settings app and dig around until I find it. With Android, all it takes is a swipe gesture on the three dots and I'm there. It's crazy how much time iPhone users have to spend changing settings. The volume setting on the iPhone is also limited to the system volume. If you press the volume buttons, the volume of the whole system, for example the ringtone and notifications, is changed and god forbid you have it set to full volume, then go to YouTube and a video starts, your alarm clock rings in the morning, it has the volume that you have set with the buttons, so your ears fly off in the morning when the alarm clock goes off. On Android, tap the three dots and you can set the volume for the ringtone, alarm clock and media separately. That's it. Number 5. Keyboard And even when I was still using the iPhone as my daily driver, this already bothered me. Apple's own keyboard has neither a number row nor are periods and commas displayed. When typing, I always have to switch to the second page to find the numbers and punctuation marks. Why is that? Because you use commas and periods so rarely in everyday life? And it's not as if you can change or customize the keyboard on iOS. I find this a thousand times better solved with Android because I can customize my keyboard the way I want, even in size, color, shape and decide for myself what is displayed to me. I can even display the alternative characters so that I can access them by holding down the letter and not having to switch to another page. Number 6. Smart Features then there are small things that I really like in everyday life on Android that are missing on the iPhone. For example, reverse wireless charging. I can charge other devices wirelessly with my Pixel or Samsung so that I don't have to lug around the charging cable for my watch, for example. When I connect my Android smartphone to the charging cable, it tells me how long it will take to fully charge. This information is missing on the iPhone. Of course, none of this is decisive, but in my opinion, it contributes to a much better user experience. People always give the impression that iPhones are so intuitive and user-friendly, which makes me wonder from an Android user's point of view what is supposed to be user-friendly about all the points I just mentioned. Number 7. Lack of AI In recent months, Google and Samsung have launched smart AI functions on the market with their new devices and software updates that we would never have guessed were even possible. Automatic translation of emails, smart text suggestions when writing, a dedicated assistant that answers the phone and asks the caller why they are calling, image and video editing that is simply next level, and now with the S24 Ultra, live translations of phone calls so that we can easily talk to the whole world. None of this, not even in rudimentary form, can be found on an iPhone. I have the feeling that Apple certainly has big plans in many areas, but the iPhone, and even the latest model, looks like a relic from 2018, compared to the current Samsung Galaxies and Google Pixel smartphones. In my opinion, the iPhone has not developed at all in the last five years, which I personally find extremely unfortunate, because I have always been a big fan of the iPhone and Apple in general. But unfortunately, I'm also a big fan of progress and the development of new possibilities that make our everyday lives easier. The iPhone simply missed the boat five years ago. Of course, the iPhone has its strength compared to Android smartphones. But these strengths are actually exclusively within the Apple ecosystem and there are also more and more really good alternatives in the Android area. For example, FaceTime. We simply always use WhatsApp video telephony, which can also be used for conferences. Or AirDrop. But here too, there are integrated alternatives such as QuickShare or Nearby Share that work at least as well. However, there is one thing that I find sorely lacking on Android smartphones, which I think is the coolest feature on the iPhone. MagSafe. Being able to simply attach chargers, wallets and pop sockets to the back of an iPhone is a real hit. And I really wish this feature was available on Android devices. But luckily there are manufacturers who have a solution for everything, such as this magnet here, you can attach to your smartphone or any case and thus use all MagSafe accessories. I hope you enjoyed my video on why I currently don't use an iPhone. And please don't take this topic 
too personally and be respectful in the comments. These are just objects we are talking about here. Friends, thank you so much for watching. Bye and see you next time. Mwah.